In my previous video, I spoke about the difference between a CPU simulator and a system simulator. Today, I'm going to describe how uh, one can design a system simulator. So, when doing that, we must start with uh, looking at uh, an actual computer. This is an example of a Spectrum computer, which is uh, based on a Z80 CPU. A system simulator should uh, implement simulations for most of these components, but what are these components exactly? Well, first there is obviously the CPU, in this case uh, the Z80 CPU. There's a uh, memory, uh, this is the RAM. Uh, it's implemented uh, in multiple chips. Uh, Another memory type, this is the ROM or read-only memory. Uh, there's an I.O. controller, actually in this case this chip is also involved in memory access, but let's consider it just an I.O. controller. Uh, some multiplexer chips, which are involved in memory addressing. There's a video section that constructs video signal that can be then seen on a TV screen. There's a crystal oscillator that provides clock signal for the different chips. There's a speaker, actually uh, at that time it was known as a beeper since it allowed hearing some beeps. There's a power regulator, and uh, obviously there are a bunch of connections, uh, otherwise known as buses. So, uh, when uh, trying to design a system emulator, the main question that uh, pops into mind is what to simulate. Uh, should we simulate individual chips? Well, most likely no, because if uh, we were going to simulate each individual component, then uh, we would actually build an emulator. And we are not interested in that. We are interested in uh, providing a simulation that would allow us to run a program uh, written for this architecture and uh, get the same uh, outputs. That's uh, either video image or uh, sound. So then we are not going to simulate individual chips, but uh, we are going to simulate subcomponents. So uh, we must have a CPU simulation, uh, we must have some memory simulation, uh, considering the two types of uh, memory present here, uh, RAM and ROM. Uh, we should have some uh, I.O. control, uh, some connection with uh, the different uh, peripheral devices, and uh, we should have a simulation for the connections between uh, these devices, and especially uh, to implement memory mapping. But uh, this is more or less uh, part of the bus simulation. So, to sum it up, a uh, simulator uh, will have an architecture similar to this one, where uh, we need to have uh, a memory bus, uh, which is attached to the CPU simulation. In this diagram, uh, the different blocks are not uh, hardware uh, devices, but are simulations. So, we need to have <coughs> a CPU simulation, memory bus attached to the CPU simulation, a simulation of the RAM, a simulation of the ROM, a simulation of memory mapped devices. These are all attached to the memory bus, and uh, the memory bus should, uh, again, the memory bus simulation. Uh, should be able to handle uh, addressing of these different devices. Uh, then <coughs> we should have an uh, IO bus simulation, which is more or less similar to the memory bus simulation. But uh, this is connected to IO devices, and 
there should probably be a control bus simulation which allows uh, activating uh, CPU control signals such as uh, interrupts. Okay, so I hope now uh, possible architecture for a simple uh, system simulator is clear for you and see you next time.